Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Carmel New Church. I'm Pastor Mark, and I thank you for joining us here online today. We are busy in our series on forgiveness. We are in week four, so if you have missed one of the weeks, I invite you to go to our YouTube channel and look at the other three weeks. You can find them either under our current series or under the full church services. We spend our time together looking to the Lord, and we find the Lord speaking to us in His Word. And so we start our service together by opening up of the Lord's Word, that it's a place we go to, to find Him, to hear Him, and to be taught by Him. So let's start our service by opening the Lord's Word. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. We will now have a time of prayer. I will introduce a prayer and then you're invited to join me for the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. O Lord God, our Savior Jesus Christ, we thank you for the time that we're able to spend focused on you during this week. Lord, the time that we spend with you is a time to open up our hearts and our minds and to look more deeply at what is going on within. So Lord, as we read your word and as we learn from it, Lord, help us to see those truths and compare them to how we are living currently in our life. Lord, you are the way, the truth, and the life. And if we follow you, Lord, we know that you lead to happiness, that your path is love, a love that we can experience in this world, and one that we take with us then to the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in the heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so upon the earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. O Lord, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Amen. Good morning, children. We now have our children's video that we're going to watch, and it's a story about the Lord and a woman who was caught doing something that she shouldn't have, and the reaction that the people had to this woman. So listen now carefully to the story of the woman. The word tells us of a promised land. And in that promised land, we learn about a man called Jesus. Jesus would visit with people, talk with them, and teach them. He gave us lessons, showed us miracles, healed the sick, and showed us how to love. One day, Jesus went into the temple, and people gathered around him. He sat down to teach them. Some of the people in the temple were teachers of the law. They would make sure that everyone followed the rules of the law. On this morning, the teachers of the law brought a woman to Jesus. They said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught doing something wrong. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such a woman. 
What do you say? Jesus bent down and started to write in the sand with his finger. They kept on questioning him, so he stood up and said to them, Whoever has never done anything wrong, they can throw the first stone. And he bent down again and wrote in the sand. When the teachers of the law heard what he said, they began to go away, one at a time. The older ones first, until Jesus and the woman were alone. Jesus stood up and looked at the woman and said, Woman, where are they? Has no one found you guilty? No one, sir, she replied. Then neither do I find you guilty, he said. Go on your way and stop doing what is wrong. So children, we are going to be talking about guilt today. The story was about guilt. What does it mean to be guilty? Or what does it feel like to be guilty? Now I'm sure you've all felt guilty. Maybe you haven't recognized it or you don't know the name of what you're feeling, but think for a moment about something that you know you shouldn't do, but you go and you do it anyway. How does it make you feel when you know, I shouldn't really have done that? That feeling, when we know that we've done something wrong, that feeling that we have is guilt. Here's an example. I really want a cookie, or I really want a sweet, but we know we're not allowed to go help ourselves to sweets and cookies out of the kitchen. And we know that we should ask for permission, but instead... We decide we're going to go and take one secretly without anybody knowing. And so we go into the kitchen and we take that cookie, we take that sweet, and we go and hide in the bedroom and we eat it or we go outside where no one can see us and we eat that cookie or we eat that sweet. The reason why we're hiding is because we are feeling on the inside guilty. We know that what we've done is wrong we've made a mistake we've made a bad choice and we can feel it on the inside that is guilt that is the feeling that we're talking about today but feeling guilty is not the problem feeling guilty is actually part of what the Lord's design or what how the Lord made us he made us to feel guilty when we make bad choices so that feeling of being guilty is not bad. But it's there for a reason. And it's there to help us see that we have made a mistake. In our story today, we had two sets of people. We had the woman who knew she was guilty. And we had the, the teachers of the law, the scribes and the Pharisees, who also realized after the Lord had written in the sand and asked them, has anyone else ever made a mistake? And they had to think to themselves and go, actually, yes, we've also made mistakes. And so they turned and they walked away. That feeling of guilt when we realize that we have made a mistake is there to help us turn away from what we are doing and instead choose something different. So the scribes and the Pharisees, the teachers of the law, the Lord helped them see and feel guilt about what they were doing, and they turned away. And then the Lord helped the woman who was feeling guilty. He said to her, I don't hold you guilty. I'm not here to punish you. I'm here to help you 
to set you free from that guilt. And being set free from the guilt is to realize, I have done something wrong. I have that feeling. It's there to remind me I'm, doing, I'm making a bad choice. Let me choose something different. Let me remember to ask next time I want something. Let me choose a different thing, a different way, and then to go and do that. And so guilt is not bad. It's there to help us recognize and feel the mistake that we have made and instead choose to follow in the Lord's ways. And so guilt is there for us to feel. It's there for us to be reminded of our choices and a, remember, a reminder to turn to the Lord and ask Him to help lead us on a different path. It's an important lesson to remember from that story of forgiveness. Forgiveness of the mistakes that we, get, that we make in our own lives. How can we forgive ourselves and make better choices? Amen. We'll now have a time of uh, interlude. Before we get to the interlude though, let's end with a prayer. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, our Savior Jesus Christ, we know that all you want to do is help us remove what is evil or selfish or hurtful from our lives, to turn away from bad mistakes and instead turn towards you and turn towards a heavenly path. So Lord, when the next time we feel guilt, will you help us to choose a different path? perhaps to say sorry for the things that we have done, to make amends for our mistake with the people we have hurt, and then choose to do better next time. Lord, you are always, always with us, always guiding us, and giving us the strength to make better choices. Amen. May the Lord give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Amen. Let us now go to the interlude.
Good morning again. Welcome to the Carmel Church and welcome to our series on forgiveness. We are in the fourth week of our series. If you have missed one of the weeks, you're welcome to go back to our YouTube channel and you'll find the other weeks there. Today we are talking about forgiving ourselves. And forgiving ourselves comes in the form of guilt. Guilt is that feeling that we have and it's a, it's a burden that we carry, a burden that we need to forgive ourselves for. So today we're going to be looking at grief or, or at guilt, sorry. And now we've all experienced guilt. We've all experienced guilt when we've done something wrong. We are at work, we make a mistake, we do a wrong calculation, we provide wrong information, someone gets upset. And as soon as we realize we're the ones who have made the mistake, right, there's that pit in our stomach. There's that f blood pressure rises, a little bit of panic and fear as we realize we've made the mistake. Once we've made the mistake, our boss arrives and we've got to sort out the problem and come up with the solution and help solve the problem. And once that solution is there, then that sense of guilt can fade away. There's that forgiveness of that guilt. But guilt doesn't always move away as easily. It doesn't always fade away as easily. And sometimes we end up in a, a deeper guilt that we are stuck with for a while. Perhaps in a relationship that we have, whether it's with our parents, with our spouse, with our kids, we, we have an argument, we shout and scream, we say nasty words, we bring up things from the past, and we are hurtful in what we say in what we do. And afterwards we reflect on what we've done when, and we, we come to regret it. We feel a bit ashamed and guilty that we have caused that pain. And the pain and that guilt being deeper, we tend to then start to churn over in our minds, well, I should have done this and I should have said that instead, and I, and I should have approached it from this direction. And we start churning around all the things that we should have done or, or could have done, or the what-ifs. And then we're pondering, well, what is the outcome going to be? What's the future? What, how have we damaged things? And so our mind is in all sorts of turmoil. And in that guilt, we get stuck. And so there are different kinds of guilt. And the Lord has given that guilt to us. But their guilt in itself is not bad. Like we were talking with the kids, the guilt is there as part of a process. It's part of a steps that we go through in forgiveness. Last week we looked at the four steps of forgiveness. In that process is guilt. Guilt is a part of that. But guilt is the burden that we carry that we then need to forgive ourselves for. We need to somehow let go of this burden of guilt. So guilt becomes a problem either when we don't experience guilt or when we get stuck in guilt. Then guilt becomes a problem. I want to talk first about not experiencing guilt. If you don't experience guilt, then I would strongly challenge you to reflect deeply on your day. At the end of a day, reflect on what are the things that you've said, what are the things that you've done, how have you interacted with people, what have your thoughts been during the day, what are you dwelling on in your thoughts, and what is the intention behind what you do. Think about those seriously, deeply consider the things that you are doing and then compare them to what you say you believe. So as Christians, we believe in principles that are based on love to the Lord and love to the neighbor. And so the things that we base our life on are the values of kindness and thoughtfulness and serving others and being helpful Right? compassionate, understanding, patient. Those are the values 
of which we say we believe. And then we compare our life this day. What have I done this day? And compare that to how the Lord says I should be living. And as we compare how we've lived our day with what the Lord says, we will see that there are discrepancies, that we are impatient, that we are critical, that we are selfish in our dealings, that we are, get angry and frustrated with people. We want to put ourselves first. And all those places that we see where we are lacking compared to the Lord's way then brings us into a state of guilt. When we see we're not living up to the values that we say we believe in, then guilt is part of of our feelings. We feel like we have done wrong, we feel like we have fallen short, and we feel guilty. And then we go through the process of dealing with that guilt. The other problem, or the other side of guilt, is getting stuck in guilt. Now in our story, that we had for the children, and I'm going to read again in a moment, we see two sets of people. We see the woman, and we see the scribes and the Pharisees, and they both go through guilt. The scribes and the Pharisees, we see what guilt should be like, sort of the, the healthy guilt. And from the perspective of the woman, we see an unhealthy guilt. So let's read this story from John 8. Now early in the morning, Jesus came again into the temple, and all the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought him a woman caught in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery, in the very act. Now Moses in the law commands us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? And this they said, testing Jesus, that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Then those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one beginning with the oldest, even to the last. Then Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. And when Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? And she said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. So in the story, we see two aspects of guilt. We see the scribes and the Pharisees, and we see the woman. I want to look at the scribes and the Pharisees. Here we see an example of how guilt should work in our lives. Here we have scribes and Pharisees who come with accusations against the woman. They judgment and they want to convict her. And they want to do harm, kill her, stone her to death. The scribes and Pharisees are a part of us. Right? Everything in the Lord's Word is telling us about what's going on in our lives. So as we consider this story, all those elements of the story are within our own hearts and minds. And so we can be like the scribes and Pharisees. We can see somebody else's mistake 
and come to accuse them of it and to throw stones at them, right? The accusations at them are like throwing stones. But the Lord is with us. The Lord is always with us in our conscience. Our conscience is those things that we know to be true from the Lord, right? Those principles that we live by. So when we approach someone and we are about to hurt them physically or with our words, the Lord is with us and trying to raise up within us the awareness of what he's teaching, of what he teaches, so that we can, instead of looking outwards, first consider what is in our own hearts and our own minds. It's interesting to reflect on this story. It's a bit of a side note, but the women, they were coming to convict of adultery, right? physical, natural adultery. But the Pharisees themselves were also in the wrong. Right? They were coming and trying to convict this woman, but with the motive, the selfish motive, of actually trying to trap Jesus. So they were hiding behind the law. They were using the law for their own benefit. And in spiritual terms, when we use the Lord's word for our own benefit to get what we want out of a situation, that is spiritual adultery. And so we have here a woman caught in adultery and people who think they know better trying to convict her of natural adultery, but yet being in spiritual adultery themselves. They haven't seen the mistake that they are in. And so the Lord's word is there in our minds, in our conscience, and asks us to consider what we're doing. Why am I doing this? And to reflect on our own selves. What mistake am I making? Yes, other people make mistakes, but haven't I also made mistakes? If they have made that mistake, I have probably made that mistake too in my life. Someone might have committed adultery in their natural life, but have I committed adultery in my spiritual life? And we are all guilty of a variety of things. If we stop to look more deeply in ourselves, to use the Lord's word in our conscience, to convict ourselves that we too are sinners. We too make mistakes. We too make the wrong choices in life. And it brings to mind the teaching that the Lord says, see to the plank in our own eyes before we look at the speck in somebody else's eye. The same principle applies in this story. Why are we trying to convict somebody else when we are full of our own mistakes? So the Lord's word and the Lord writing in the sand, is an, it's an image of the Lord knowing all of our qualities. He knows our mind. He knows our heart. There's no hiding from him. And when we go to the Lord, when we go to his word, when we go to those true ideas in our conscience, we are able to see where we are going wrong. The Lord can lead us to see where we are going wrong and to hold ourselves guilty. And then, like the Pharisees, what did they do? Their conscience convicted them, and they turned, and they left. When we realize that we have made a mistake, right, and we judge ourselves, and we judge ourselves as guilty, we feel that guilt, and it's part of a process to help us to change our thinking, change our ways, and to go forward in a new way, along a new path. And so guilt is part of that process, leading us to reassess our lives and to choose differently and to go on a new path. So guilt is really an important part of our spiritual growth. If we are active participate, actively participating in our, our spiritual growth, or actively participating in our relationship with the Lord, we will feel guilty a lot of the time because we're constantly looking at ourselves, 
constantly looking to the Lord and seeing what parts of our life fall short and where are the changes that I need to make as I move forward. So guilt is important. But it becomes a problem, like I say, if you don't feel guilty, but also more commonly when we get stuck in that guilt. Let's put ourselves in the place of the woman. The woman is sitting there in the midst and the crowd, imagine the crowd starting to gather, all these people gathering around and might even imagine them with stones ready to assault. When we feel guilty about something, the, a crowd starts to gather within our minds. But the crowd is made up of our own thoughts. The crowd in us is all those what ifs. What if I had done this? What if I had done that? What about this? What about that? All those thoughts about what could have been or what should have been. All those things of the past that are churned up inside of our minds. But also things about the future. How is this going to affect things in the future and churning away in our minds. Right? And that builds this dark cloud in our minds as, it, as our mind gathers to convict us, to throw stones at us and say things like, you're not worthy. Or you're a bad parent. Or you're failing in your marriage. Or you, you know good, you will never achieve, you will never be right, you will never, and we can fill in the blanks. All those negative thoughts that we start having, having about ourselves. I'm, I'm unlovable, I'm unworthy. I'm unworthy of the Lord's love. The Lord will never forgive me, I can't forgive myself. All those negative things start gathering around us in our minds, throwing stones, throwing accusations at us, trying to break us down, to condemn us, to punish us. So how do we move forward? How do we get out of that dark, desperate place? A way to get out of it is to find some perspective. One of the wonderful things about the new church is the new perspective that the teachings can bring to our lives. And so I want to read to you from the book Secrets of Heaven by Emanuel Swedenborg, number 1088. Here's a spiritual truth. It says, Evil spirits never do anything else than stir up a person's evils and falsities and condemn him. I'm going to read that again. Evil spirits never do anything else then stir up your evils and your falsities and condemn you. That's that crowd that gathers in our minds. The evils from hell, the evil spirits from hell are always trying to influence us. And they influence us through our thoughts. And so if we are caught up in all these thoughts about what was and, and what could be, we don't have any space between us and our thoughts. But through the simple idea that it is the evil spirits that are, are motivating these thoughts in us, that gives us a little bit of a gap between our thoughts and ourselves. We are not our thoughts. Part of our spiritual journey is to realize that we can look down on the thoughts that we are having. We can think about the things we're thinking about right, from a higher level, an inner level. So what the spiritual truth enables us to do is to find some separation and to look, at our, look down on our thoughts and say, these thoughts are motivated by the hells. It provides a little bit of perspective. But that verse continues. The verse continues. It says, Angels, however, stir up nothing but good and truth and things that are even evil and false, they excuse. How often do you think about the, the angels with you? How often do you think about the good and wonderful things in your life when you're in that state of guilt? Not very often. 
Right? And, but the, once we get the perspective of, well, these things are influenced by the hells, we can also start to consider, well, what are those things that are coming to me from the heavens? What are those good and true things that are actually still part of my life? Right? We can start listening to the angels. We might call it gratitude. We're probably familiar with the practice of gratitude, looking out for those things that are good and true in our lives. Thinking about all those moments where we do affect other people with love and joy and happiness. Those aspects of our life where we are useful and caring. When we're in that state of guilt and we are stuck, we, we block out the influence of the, of the angels. The evil spirits are blocking out. They're crowding around your mind. And so a simple truth like those thoughts are from hell enable us to separate and to look for those balancing ideas that are from the Lord through his angels in us. So that's a technique that we can use to help us get a perspective on our guilt. That alone doesn't take the guilt away, but it allows us to enter into a different state. A different state where we can start to then move through the process of guilt, of dealing with that guilt. When we are in a more balanced space where we can see, yes, I have done wrong. Yes, I have made a mistake. Yes, that was a bad choice. Yes, I did cause pain. I did cause suffering in other people. But we can also balance it that the Lord is with me. The Lord is guiding me. The Lord forgives me. Then we're able to start moving forward. To take that grief, to take that realization and the acceptance that we have done wrong, and then to start to move forward, to change our minds, change the way we're thinking about things, change the way our, we perceive things, change the way we act. As long as we are caught up in that crowd, the hells are keeping us in the past and the hells are keeping us in the future. And what they are trying to keep us away from is the present moment. If they can keep you worrying about what ifs and what, what, and what of the past, they keep you away from the now. The now is where the power of the Lord exists to change our thinking, to call on the Lord and help, for His help and guidance to move us forward. And so by recognizing all the good things that are also in our lives, we're able to return to the present. We're able to return to what are those things that I need to change and what are those steps that I need to take to restore and to repair and to rebuild in my life and then to move forward. And that's the healthy part of grief, getting us to start moving forward in a new direction. Right? The Lord said to the woman, I don't condemn you. Go and sin no more. The Lord doesn't condemn us for the mistakes we've made. He can see that we are in punishment by just staying where we are. He doesn't want us to be punished. He wants us to be safe with Him. The Lord does not punish us. And so as we are able to move forward, as we are able to make progress in changing our life so the Lord is forgiving us the Lord is drawing us out and we are able to forgive ourselves let go of that burden of guilt of that darkness of that crowd in our mind and to move forward into the light so guilt is part of the process of spiritual growth guilt is part of the process and we are called to examine ourselves and we're going to find that guilt arising up in our in us 
But the Lord's intention for us is to then use that guilt. Use that guilt to admit where we have done wrong and to use it then to, to make changes in the now. How do I, what apology do I have to give? What letter can I write? And so perhaps today is the day where you come into the moment now that you've been in guilt and now is the time to make a change, to think differently about a situation or a person in your life. What can you do now to rebuild and reshape a relationship? Is it writing a letter? Is it making a call? Is it more in a work of self-examination and really getting to grips with, with a, a part of your personality that you need to address? Is now the moment for you to make a change? And in making the change, we leave behind the punishment of guilt. We forgive ourselves of that and move in our direction towards the Lord. So I encourage you today, be in the now, leave behind the negative, think of the positive, and try and make a change today that will lead you on a different path for tomorrow. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord God, our Savior Jesus Christ, you are the one who is leading us through this process. You are always there, even when it seems like you are quiet, that you may be far away. Lord, we know that you are always near. Help lead us, Lord, to the realizations that we need to see. Help us see where we have gone wrong, where we've made mistakes, where we've caught caused hurt and Lord help us to then move through that guilt into a state of light where we can change follow you and lead a more heavenly life in this world Lord we ask that you give us the strength and that you give us the courage to journey with you through this process amen May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Thank you for joining us again today. We invite you to join us again next week. It will be the last in this series on forgiveness. I hope that you have found something useful and meaningful in this series that has helped you on this difficult path of forgiveness. Join us again. O'er the silent waters, through the depths of night, came the loving mandate.